The National Broadcasting Company brings you Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell in... Dangerous Assignment. The time, midnight. The place, a carnival on the outskirts of Zurich, Switzerland. Two men slip furtively through the shadows near the slowly revolving carousel. They stare intently into the darkness. Triflis must be around here somewhere, Carl. Yeah, handsome. We both saw him enter the carnival grounds. Well, where could he hide? The carnival is almost deserted. You see, there's only one person riding on the carousel and... Carl! Carl, it is he, Triflis, right on the rod nose. Yeah, riding on the carousel. Good. We wait and we will ride right into our arms. He sees us. Come on. Hanson, drag him from the carousel. No, no. Grab him. Grab him. Yeah, yeah, I have him. No, let go of me. Let go. Carl, drag him into the shadows no. here. Yeah. The American document, Triflis. Where is it? I, I do not know what you're talking about. The one they called File 307. You sold it to Brunner, didn't you, Triflis? Didn't you? I... Yes, to Brunner. In that case, you will not live to spend the money. No, no. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah. Stop the... Oh, no, no. Not my throat. I, I can't breathe. Yeah, no. Exactly. More pressure, Carl. I, I, a little more, Carl. I cannot squeeze any tighter. Uh, it is enough pressure. Just hold it a moment here. So, I think that is enough. Yes, you may let him go now, Carl. You've seen him in such pictures as An American Romance, The Great McGinty, and Command Decision. Now, here is our star, Brian Donlevy, in another two-fisted portrayal as Steve Mitchell in Dangerous Assignment. Ruth, you've got the worst sense of timing I ever saw. You're always dragging me back here to the office when I'm right in the middle of a big deal. Maybe she was a big deal to you, Steve, but she looked more like a stacked deck to me. You know, some of these gals may start picketing you. What's this all about, anyway? That's what the commissioner's waiting in his office to tell you. Here we are. Hmm. I have your passport and credentials ready when you are. Okay, thanks, Ruth. Oh, Steve. Hello, commissioner. Well, where am I going this time? Zurich, Switzerland. Switzerland? Look... I can't even yodel. You won't have time to yodel. Steve, ever hear the name Bruner before? Bruner? Sounds vaguely familiar. Who is he, Commissioner? I don't know. Huh? Bruner's always been a very mysterious figure, Steve. None of our agents has ever seen him. Matter of fact, I don't suppose there are more than a handful of people in the entire world who know what he looks like. Yeah, I remember now. Bruner's a sort of an international mystery man who sells information to the highest bidder. We think Bruner has file 307, Steve. File 307? Top secret document containing defense plans. Two weeks ago, it was stolen from this country. Oh, you think it's in Zurich now? We had information it was temporarily in the possession of a seamy little man named Triflis. This morning, his body was discovered near a carnival grounds outside of Zurich. Mm. Needless to say, file 307 wasn't on Triflis's body. No, but Triflis paid a visit to Bruner's villa two hours before he was murdered. We think he sold file 307 to Bruner. Mm. And I'm supposed to get it back from this international secret seller, huh? Great. Well, have we got any contacts in Zurich? One. His name is Max Raber. He runs the carnival over there. Mm. Just uh, one more thing, Steve, as to the danger involved. Yeah, I don't imagine trying to get into Bruner's villa is a habit-forming occupation. There's more than that. Other interests are also trying to get file 307 from Bruner. Naturally, they'll try to stop you permanently. Their agents may be watching you right from the start. Yeah. Well, that's it, Steve. As usual, you'll pose as a foreign correspondent after an interview with Bruner. Actually, you ought to find file 307 and bring it back. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Steve Mitchell departed United States for Zurich, apparently on assignment as foreign correspondent. 
keep him under surveillance, find out his real mission. Very well, Mr. Mitchell. We will try to give you a very cordial reception here in Zurich. Taxi cab, sir. Taxi. Oh, okay, driver. Kenny Hotel. Yes, sir. You're an American, sir. Yeah. On a uh, vacation, perhaps? Not exactly. Well, I'm a good guide, sir. I can show you the points of interest here in Zurich. Never mind. I'm afraid I won't have much time for sightseeing. No, wait a minute. Uh, yes, sir? There's a large villa a couple of kilometers outside of the city. Got a high wall around it. You know where it is? Why, I think I can find it, sir. Okay. When you get me to the hotel, wait for me. I'll want you to take me out to that villa. I will be very happy to, sir. Hello, Carl. This is Hanson speaking. I've just brought Mitchell to the Koenig Hotel from the airport. I'm waiting for him now. <laughs> no. No, he doesn't suspect me. He thinks I'm just a cab driver. He wants me to take him to Buna's villa, so he's after file 307, all right. Now listen, Carl. There is a Max Raber who runs the carnival. They might be working together. If Mitchell tries to contact Raber, you know what to do. might be the villa you are looking for, sir. It is the only one with a high wall near here. Well, that must be it, then. Okay, here you are. Oh, but uh, I can wait for you, sir. Never mind. Very well, sir. If you should need me further, my name is Hanson, and my cab is usually in front of your hotel. Oh? You're quite an obliging guy, aren't you, Hanson? Sir? I'll skip it. Thanks. <laughs> Some joint. Looks like a penitentiary. Oh, there ought to be a gatekeeper around here somewhere. Who are you? What are you doing here? What do you want? One at a time. I'm Steve Mitchell, foreign correspondent from the United States. What do you want? An interview with Brunner. Go away. Now look. You cannot see Brunner. Brunner gives interviews to no one. Go away. Yeah, but is it can? Well, this fella is getting better looking by the minute. What's the matter, Fritz? This man wants to see Bruna. Oh, I'm Bruna's secretary, Karen. Hello. You're Mr. The Steve Mitchell. You're Bruna's secretary. <laughs> he should be so lucky. You can go, Fritz. I'll take care of this. Very well, Karen. But don't let him get into the gate. Much cozier with just the two of us, isn't it? Just what was it you wanted, Mr. Mitchell? I'm a newspaper correspondent. No. Well, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, then. Your boss isn't too eager when it comes to giving out interviews, huh, Karen? Bruna sees no one, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, that's the general impression I've gotten, but I thought he might possibly make an exception in my case. You say you wish a story? That's right. And that's all you wish here? It was before I met you. I mean, a story is all you wish from Bruna. <laughs> what else would I be after? I do not know. Suppose you come back tomorrow, Mr. Mitchell. Tomorrow? Yes. I will tell Bruno about you and ask him if he will see you. Why, thanks. You'd be doing me a big favor, Karen. All right, Mr. Mitchell. I will try to persuade him. Until tomorrow, then. Hi. Is the boss around? The boss? Yeah, the guy who runs this carnival. You mean Max Reber? That his name? I'd like to talk to him. Where is he? Over there, standing at the shooting gallery. The short man with the gun in his hand. Okay. Nice shot. Thank you. I seldom miss. Oh? <laughs> Looks like you know what you're talking about. You, uh, Max Reber? That is correct. 
I'm Steve Mitchell. You missed. Does the name mean anything to you? A name is for anyone who cares to use it. That's right. But these credentials aren't. Do you mind squinting down your peep sight at them? Put them away. The commissioner sent you, Mitchell? Yeah. He said you might be able to help me. You're after fire at 307. Yeah. You any information on it? I think the person they call Bruna has it. Yeah, it looks that way. The guy who had it before him turned up dead near your carnival, didn't he? You missed again, Max. Perhaps because you're crowding me, Mitchell. Oh, sorry. Go to 25 Bolligstrasse and wait for me. As soon as I close the carnival for the night, I'll come. We'll talk further. 25 Brolichstrasse. Right. Only six hits out of eight. I am slipping. That's slipping? Look, Raver, do me a favor. What? Don't ever point that gun at me. <laughs> Three. Here it is. Twenty-five Brolichstrasse. Hmm. All dark. Unlocked. Well, Max has to wait here for him. I wonder where the lights are. Hey, who closed the door? What? In just a moment, our star, Brian Donlevy, returns as Steve Mitchell in Dangerous Assignment. The United States is now building the largest, best-trained peacetime armed forces in its history. Our United Services, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard are training a new kind of serviceman, training him in the greatest scientific enterprise in the world. Yesterday, he was a man of weapons. Today, to a large degree, he's a man of science. Yes, a brilliant future in technology is available to America's young men in the new armed forces. So remember, the time for the future is now. Find it in the armed forces of the United States. Now, the National Broadcasting Company brings you Act Two of Dangerous Assignment... Starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell. The time, one hour later. The place, the police station in Zurich, Switzerland. Oh. So, you were coming around at last. What? Oh. The head, it hurts, huh? The head, it hurts, huh? Hey, this looks like a jail. It is. Uh. I am Police Inspector Baumgartner. Police? Jail? Look, I don't get it. Neither do we. When we found you four kilometers west of the city, I... How did I get four kilometers west of the city? Last I remember was walking in a house at 25 Brolichstrasse and getting hit on the head. One of our policemen saw a cab with two men in it, traveling at high speed out of the city. He gave chase. The men finally abandoned the cab... When the policeman got to it, he found you lying on the floor, unconscious. Uh, remind me to thank him. Looked like I was getting taken for the well-known ride when he came along. Eh? Skip it. You say there were two men in the cab. Whose cab was it? We are checking that. Why? Well, I was just thinking about a very eager cab driver named Hansen who wanted to show me the sights around Zurich. Now it is my turn <laughs> to ask the questions. What were you doing at 25 Brolichstrasse? I was sent there by... Hey... By a carnival owner I thought was a friend of mine. Incidentally, is there a telegraph office around here? Down the street. Hey, Mitchell, your credentials are those of a newspaper correspondent. May I inquire what you are really doing here in Zurich? It's very simple, Inspector. I'm trying to get an interview with a mysterious character named Brunner. Brunner. Hey, Mitchell, a word of advice. You are apparently involved with very dangerous people. It might be better for you to give it up. Oh? Well, thanks for the advice. I'd sleep on it, except it's almost morning. Yeah, you sleep on it, Herr Mitchell. Only be sure you're able to wake up. May I inquire what you are really doing here in Zurich? It's very simple, Inspector. I'm trying to get an interview with a mysterious character named Brunner. Brunner? 
Herr Mitchell, a word of advice. You are apparently involved with very dangerous people. It might be better for you to give it up. Oh? Well, thanks for the advice. I'd sleep on it, except it's almost morning. Yeah, you sleep on it, Herr Mitchell. Only be sure you're able to wake up, huh? It's been Steve, Commissioner. Good. I've been expecting a report from him. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Ruth. File 307, apparently in Bruner's possession. His beautiful secretary, Karen, trying to arrange appointment for interview. Just between us, would rather interview Karen... No. <laughs> he never changes, does he? Apparently, Max Raber, not such hot friend of ours after all. I'm still nursing large lump on head, which I collected at a dress Raber sent me to. What? I don't understand, Commissioner. I thought Max Raber could be trusted. I guess in this business you never know, Ruth. Oh, there's some more coming in. We'll pay Raber another visit this morning when his carnival opens up. In the meantime, I'm going back to Bruner's villa. We'll keep you informed. Well, this is quite an apartment you've got here, Karen. Much better than trying to talk through the bars of that gate outside. Yes, it is a nice apartment. Bruna takes good care of me. You know something? He should. <laughs> you say nice things, Steve. Sometimes it comes easy. I'm afraid it won't do you any good to look out the window, Steve. You won't see Bruner. Oh? He lives in that other wing, across the courtyard. Hmm. Look, uh, what kind of a guy is he, anyway? Mm, a short little man. Very quiet. A short man? A fascinating man to work for. I can imagine. Uh, Steve, mm. I talked to him last evening about you. He doesn't believe you. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't believe it's just an interview you want. Oh? What else would I be after? He's not sure yet. But uh, supposing you were after a story. Bruna's interested in knowing just how much you would be willing to pay for it. We're uh, talking about the story, of course. Of course. Well, that's sort of a tough question to answer offhand. You see, there are others anxious to, uh, shall we say, write a story about Bruna. They are willing to pay a great deal. Yeah, I'll bet they are. And, uh, well, Bruna knows a lot more about you than you think, Steve. He knows you cannot pay as much for it as others can. I see. Well, if Bruna knows so much about me, maybe he also knows that the story we're talking about used to belong to the people I worked for. Yes, he knows that. But I'm afraid it does not make any difference to him. He says he cannot do business with you. Well, that's that, I guess. I'm sorry, Steve. So am I. Anyway, it was very nice of you to go to the trouble. I was glad to. I don't quite get why you've been so nice to me. Well, I... I guess I... You what? Well, I, I stay here in Bruna's villa most of the time... I don't see many people. And I've never seen anyone like... I mean, you were... Oh, I, I don't know what I mean. Maybe this is what you mean, Karen. Oh, Steve. You... You must leave, Steve. Okay. But I'll be back. No, Steve. They would not let you in. There's a high wall and guards. Look... I said I'd see you later, and I will. With you here, I could grow wings. No, Max Reber's not here. Where is he? I do not know. Oh, he should have been here by now to open up the carnival. Yeah? Where does he live? At 25 Brolichstrasse. What? Max Reber lives at 25 Brolichstrasse? Yeah. You know where it is? Yeah. I've got lumps to prove it. Thanks. Well, Mitchell, here we go again. 25 Rolex Strasse. Hey, sounds like a fight inside. Mitchell, help me. Get these men off me. Mitchell. 
It's the eager cab driver. Carl, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Too late, Hanson. I'll take care of this one, Mitchell. Hey, you sure did take care of him, Reba. For a little guy, you sure swing a mean limb. It's good you arrived when you did, Mitchell. Five minutes more would have been too late. You know, maybe I was wrong about you, Max. Wrong? What do you mean, Mitchell? I had you pegged as the boy who arranged that hit on the head for me here last night. Oh, I told you to come here and wait for me. When I got here, you disappeared. I got taken for a ride. Maybe by these two guys on the floor here, Hanson and... and what's the other one's name? Hanson called him Carl, I think. Huh. Why'd they jump you just now? They know that we're working together. That we're after File 307. They are also after it. Look, I'm going to need your help. Have you ever seen Brunner? No. But I've been watching his villa carefully the last few days. I think I know a way we can get into the grounds. Good. At one place, in the rear of the villa, there's a tree which overhangs the walls. It looks like a difficult climb, but perhaps we can make it. Okay. We'll tie these two apes up and leave them here for the present. And after dark, you and I will pay a little call on our friend Brunner. Here, Max. Take my hand. I'll put you up to this next branch. Yeah, Steve. Mm, thank you. Yep, we're almost to the top. There. Now, I'll drop down inside of the wall first. Then you follow, okay? Go ahead. Okay. All right. Come ahead, Max. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Look, Mitchell. There are lights in that wing of the building across the courtyard. Yeah, that's where Karen says Bruno lives. We'll work our way over there and try to get in. Steve, listen. Oh, great. The hound of the Baskervilles. Look, Steve. A giant black dog coming for us. Yeah, I see him. Well, that just about cooks us. No, wait. Get lost, Raven. Huh? Lost? Get into the brushes there. Watch where they take me and try to get to me later. Now get moving. All right, Steve. Hey! Get away from me, you big lug! Hey, will somebody get the black monster off of me? Get in his streets, or against the wall. Hurry up! This dog cuts me on his manual. So, it is the nosy reporter. Get this timber wolf off me. Stop get the dog. Rich, take this man to the room in the cellar and tie him up at once. <laughs> Who's there? Steve? Karen. They told me you'd been captured in the grounds. How long have you been lying here in the cellar? I don't know. Uh, half an hour, I guess. You should not have tried to come back, Steve. You're sorry I did, Karen? Oh, Steve. I'm afraid for you. Look, just get me untied. I, I cannot do that, Steve. What? Now, look, Angel. Fun is fun. Bruno but... would kill me if I did a thing like that. Look, you let me worry about Bruno. I cannot untie you now. I must get back right away or they will become suspicious. But, well, perhaps I can come back later. Come here. Okay. But make it sooner instead of later. I'll try, Steve. This is a great spot you got yourself in, Mitchell. Steve. Max, how long have you been in the next room? For several minutes. Here, I'll untie you. Good. I would have come in sooner, but from what I could hear, you were not very anxious to be rescued. Uh, yeah. Look, you know your way around this villa pretty well, don't you, Max? What do you mean? Finding these rooms in the cellar without much trouble. I told you I've been watching this villa the last few days. You're pretty short, too, aren't you? I, I do not understand. Karen told me Brunner was short. Don't let your imagination run away with you. I'm trying not to. How did you get in here so easily, anyway? I diverted their attention by setting a fire in the yard. A fire in the... Hey, hey, hey. you believe in doing things up brown, don't you? Yeah. Mm. The last of the knots. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Out of the side door into the hall. Hey, no guards. No, they're probably all fighting the fire out in the yard. Come, up these stairs. We'll try to get over the back wall while their attention is diverted. Over the wall? Look, I came to this villa after file 307, and I'm not leaving until I get it. Steve, that's impossible. We would be lucky to escape with our lives to continue the search for the document that would mean certain deaths for both of us. Well, you get discouraged too easy. Is this the door to the yard? Yeah. All clear. Come on. Hey, that really is a fire you started. Come, Mitchell. It's spreading toward the front gate. 
It's our chance to get over the back wall. Hey, wait a minute, Max. We're not leaving yet. What? Look, that building over there. It's Brunner's wing of the villa. Steve, are you crazy? We cannot get in there. Why not? The door's open. This is our big chance, Reba. But, Steve, I tell you... Look, I came all the way across the Atlantic to find that piece of paper. Come on. Anybody spot us? I don't think so. They're all fighting the flames. Okay, let's get inside. Close the door. Yeah. Bruno must be out at the fire, too, Steve. Yeah. Brother... I thought Karen's apartment was something. This one looks like the Waldorf Astoria. Well, come on, let's go through some of these drawers. But, Steve, if the document's in here, it's probably in a safe. You can't tell. Brunner might figure a safe would be the obvious place. Hey, what have you found? Silk stockings and negligee, Steve. Yeah, me too. I don't get it. I would... Wait huh? a minute. Boy, I'm really slipping, Max. Sure it took me a long time to catch on. Steve, look. This leather case. Give it to me. Mm. Someone's coming. What? Here, put the case back in that drawer. Hurry. Yeah. Well, Steve. Karen Brunner. Complete with gun. Karen Brunner? I see you've discovered my little secret. I should have figured it. You're not Brunner's secretary. You're Brunner. You're lucky, Steve. Lucky that I feel a certain affection for you. Otherwise, your discovery would have cost you your life. Steve, stay away from that drawer. Another step and I'll shoot. Okay, Karen. I lose. That's better. You were... Yes. You were getting very warm, Steve. So close to the right drawer. And yet so far. Yeah. Well, what happens now, Karen? I told you. You were lucky. I'm going to let you go. But you'd better go now. Okay, well, it was nice while it lasted, baby. Yes, it was. And it would be something to remember when you're back in America. That even though Karen Bruner was a little too clever for you, she almost fell in love with you. Goodbye, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Commissioner. Ruth said you wanted to see me as soon as I got back. I certainly do, Steve. I got the cable you sent from Zurich before you left. So Karen, the beautiful secretary, turned out to be Bruner. She sure did. Steve, you let me down badly. Huh? Letting a woman razzle-dazzle you like that. But I finally figured out she was Bruner, Commissioner. Yes, but too late. Not quite. I didn't mention it in my cable, but... Here. What's that? File 307. What? That's what you sent me over there to get, isn't it? Why, yeah, yes, but... I... I don't understand. <laughs> you see, I'd found the papers and stuck them in my shirt before she walked in. And when I made a pass at the drawer where they'd been, she figured they were still there. I give up, Steve, of all the... <laughs> yeah. Karen was a razzle-dazzle artist, but she forgot the two can play that kind of football. I guess she'd never run into the hidden ball play before. Yeah. So long, Commissioner. <laughs> You have just heard The Seventh in an exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment is written by Bob Reif and directed by Bill Karn, with music by Bruce Ashley. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.